Hello there, it's Simone. I'm so glad you are joining me today for a currently inked video. I am still figuring out how I'm going to film those in the future, but this is what I came up with this month. In on May 23rd, I filmed a video after inking up my pens and I had, wow, now I don't even remember, nine pens inked up. These are the ones that were inked. I had the Pelicano Junior, um, that is one that my middle son learned to write with um, when he, or not write with, but that's the one that he used when he learned how to write with a fountain pen. The nib says A, it's probably for, for Anfänger, which means beginner. I would put this into a medium or broad, depending on which way you look. If it's Japanese, then probably broad, medium more if you look at it as a German uh, nib. And since Pelikan is from Germany, so I guess I would say this is a medium nib. I really loved the writing experience. It wrote on every paper that I wanted to write with it on and the color was just amazing. I didn't think I would like this color as much as I did. did. It was the perfect bright spot for June and May when I used this and I actually emptied this pen completely. There was nothing left in the ink cartridge. Um, I have been watching other YouTubers and their currently inked videos and I really love how Chris Saints, I hope that's the right pronunciation of the last name, does it. She gives, uh, she grades the pens at the end of the writing experience and writes something over here like a um, report card and since my books are so much so full or empty, what? What am I saying? Since there's so much much pa paper in here, I thought I don't want to give grades, but I think I want to write uh, a little snippet over here on how the pen and ink combination worked, what I loved, what I didn't love about the pen. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do after I filmed this video. And then maybe I can include a, vi a photo of the, um, how it turned out this time around at the end of the video because I've been thinking about this but I haven't really come up with a great way on to how to do this and then put my currently inked always over on this side. The second pen that I had inked up was the Pilot Custom 74 in burgundy. It has an M nib this is the only gold nibbed fountain pen that I own currently and it is one of my favorite pens to write with. It is super smooth and buttery. It's exactly how I like my pens. Um, I had the converter was empty. There probably was still some ink in the feed, but I decided when I cleaned my pens that I would clean this one out as well. The ink that I had in here is uh, one of the fountain pen inks that I purchased from Endless Pens. It's one of the Mica Finds uh, Endless Pens exclusives. This is a shimmer ink, but you couldn't really see the shimmer in here. Compared to this shimmer ink, which is the Stargazing, it is very, very faint, um, but I actually, this is a very bright orange and this is a very, very dark, dirty orange. Both worked really, really well. Loved, I actually loved this whole color palette, to be honest, and I really enjoyed writing with every pen. The Lamy Safari in pink, um, I had it inked with Monte Verde Kindness Pink, same same thing, it's kind of a dirty pink. Um, really wrote very nicely. It wasn't that this Wonderland orange is very bright. It worked in this color, but I'm not sure it would have worked with the pink. That's why I really enjoyed the dirtiness of this pink. And I had originally 
put on an F nib, but I did not enjoy the writing experience. So I put this medium nib on here. This is the oldest nib that is in my possession. I think this is about 30 or 35 years old. No, 35 is not true. 30, 30 years works. Um, and it's because it has been used for such a long time, it writes similarly smooth as this um, Custom 74. So even though I did not really like when my, I'm going back to the broader nibs, to the uh, bolder writing experience, and I'm using a lined notebook at the moment, and my handwriting does not look too big in here. Um, let me check if I find here. This is what it looks like with the Campfire Crackle. This is with the uh, Kindness Pink. It works nice. My handwriting looks nice. So I really, medium nibs seems to be the thing to go with. Then I had inked the Twisby VAC 700R Iris. And I had this, I had carried this over from the last ink rotation. There was still a little bit left and it was, I still hadn't emptied it out. Um, but I really also, same thing, I really enjoy the writing experience. This pen is perfectly weighted for my hand. It lay, it, it couldn't ask for more. I like that the nib is a bit bigger than uh, the regular um, nibs on the Twisbees. This is a number six nib. The Twisby Eco um, has a number five. That love love the color especially that's why i wanted to write it dry and not clean it out before it was finished then the next one was the kaweko iridescent pearl in in medium and this nib was not tuned very well i just did that the other day when i inked the other pens um, i pulled out my micro mesh and just did some figure eights on it and it totally turned this pen around for me. I really love how it glides. So this I inked up on that day and I still have a lot of ink left, probably because I don't tend to gravitate towards the pens where I know it's kind of scratchy and it feels like I need to um, put in some strength to get the pen over the paper. But now that this is over, I really like this ink. I should have researched. It looks like it has some shimmer particles in it, but like just very slightly. The next pen that I had inked is another one that I moved forward from the last time I had it inked up. It wasn't completely done. This is one of my favorite um, inks. And so I wanted to keep on using it. It was, I had an MNIB on this um, fountain pen and I really enjoyed writing with it. This is a shimmer ink and compared to other shimmer inks that I had before, the Diamine shimmer inks tend to write or work with any fountain pen that I put them in. Um, I have a rotation where I take a pen, I use it, I write with it in my writing journal, and then when that day or writing session is over, I use it everywhere else for that day, and then I switch it out. So each pen um, gets used one day, but I don't use my fountain pens every single day. And so it often is about two weeks, one and a half weeks until a fountain pen gets used again. And this, none of these gave me any trouble. Let's talk about the rest later. None of these uh, gave me any troubles. I was able to write with them right away, out of the box, no problem, which is really something that I treasure. I hate like finagling with the pen and making it right. I don't like that. If that's, it, it, it get already gets points dodged if that happens and this, happened with this fountain pen a lot. I had also inked this, moved this on from the last rotation. 
interestingly enough, it gave me a lot, a lot of troubles in the beginning when I had inked it up in the beginning. Um, I had to get start writing with it. I had to rinse it out multiple times, um, take off the nib, rinse out the shimmer. But the longer um, I have it inked up, the better it writes, which is really weird. I don't know why that happens, but uh, right now I gave it one more chance because I am not even sure that I like the ink. Um, I think I need to put it, definitely need to put it in a different pen for sure, but um, there is so much shimmer in this ink and it, it comes out almost black. And I don't know, if I use a colored ink, I would really love to see to see the, the color that it's supposed to have. And this is very dominated by, uh, by the shimmer and the dark, dark green, almost, almost black. Then I had this one inked, the Franklin Christoph uh, Model 45. It has an Opus 88M nib. They are Franklin Christoph and Opus 88, both use Yovo, Yovo nibs. You can unscrew the complete housing nib unit and then just move it around. Um, and I really enjoy this nib with the pen. I think I'm, it might be that this ink is quite dry. Um, the nib feels very hard and stiff, but nevertheless, the writing experience is really nice. It's not soft and buttery but it still works and i enjoy writing with this um, even though i it took me a while to to get used to it and then this last one was the opus 88 with the franklin christoph nib that was originally on this pen it's a sig medium nib sig stands for um stop italic gradient every time I have to think about it. And I am still not 100% sure that this is a nib for my for me. Um, I uninked it even though it was still full because I just don't gravitate towards it. And so I just want to want to give it another chance with another ink, maybe in another pen. I don't know yet. That's basically the summary. So I uninked this one. I kept these. Uh, I uninked, well, this was almost empty. These were empty. This, these two I decided to unink. Let's say this was half, half empty, almost empty. This was still full. I uninked those. Since this is one of my favorite pens, my favorite pen, I decided that I want to keep this in my rotation. So I cleaned it and inked it up right away. And then I went and picked a color palette that would work with the colors that were still left over. And let me just grab those and show those to you. So that was the Vinta Tala the Diamine Sub-Zero, the Robert Oster Tea Time, and the Robert Oster Stargazing. And then I also had a new pen in the beginning of June that was inked. I th think I spoke about this last time um, with warm book smell, old book smell from Robert Oster. So that was quite dark. And so I knew that I wanted to ink it up with or add more vibrant colors, lighter colors. And so when I received my new pen, the Opus 88 Pocket, I decided, yes, I this ink really will work well with the fountain pen, the color and is like represented in the fountain pen. So I thought this was a good match. So these were all set. And then I, I went into my samples. I picked another diamine because I really want to use the Inkvent inks and get them all into pens and experience them. 
So I picked this one and then I had a choice of four different lighter, brighter inks. Um, and I have a video on my channel and I will link it in the cards up here where I swatched these as well as two more and picked these two to add to my ink rotation. So that leaves me with a color scheme that looks kind of like this. Maybe we can, I don't know, maybe like so. And you can clearly see that I am back. I wasn't, I didn't really want to, I thought maybe eight was a nice number, but I seem to go with nine fountain pens. That's kind of the, the pens that I gravitate towards. 10 always feels already a too much, but that I, I think, I guess, this is a nice amount of pens that I, I use in my currently inked um, so I can create a very balanced um, color scheme with lighter, brighter colors, darker colors, and have some, some one ink from every color is represented. Um, so yeah, I decided because I'm still not, this is one of those pens that I'm not sure of. This is the Pilot Vanishing Point with the alloy nib. This is a steel nib with gold plating. It's an M. Um, so I filled this up with Lamy Mango. I went and pulled out my um, Kaweco AL Sport with the M nib in Golden Espresso. I had experience before that I felt like my grip was too tight on this. So I, again, I wanted to try and see if that was still right, or maybe I have eased up a bit with the writing with fountain pens. So I inked that up with Diamine Pink Ice, which is not normal for me. I, I tend to match fountain pens with ink colors. Then Festive Joy is right here. The Warm Book Smell is in another new pen that I purchased secondhand. Um, the Twisby Mini in Rose Gold. Um, it has an M nib. And just to compare, these are both pocket pens. This one is looks like the blown up version of, of this. This is so much more girth than this. It's very fine, very uh, elegant. Um, the grip section here is quite slim. This one, not so much. The grip section on this one is even wider than the grip section on the Coloro that I showed you before. Then I put the Sailor Ink Studio 123 into the Custom 74, the Vintatala into the, is was still inked up, this was still inked, this was still inked, and this was still inked. So let me show you what this color palette looks on paper. Okay, so this is the pilot vanishing point with an M nib. I'm not sure if you can actually see the issue that I'm having with this ink. Um, this is not doing it for me and I'm actually considering uninking this pen um, because I do not know why or what the problem is. <laughs> this looks nothing like this. I have, I thought maybe, maybe I had to, the, there was still some ink uh, residue from the ink that was in there before. So I rinsed it again and cleaned it out and then inked it up again. Um, 
I thought maybe it, there was some water in there, so it diluted the ink. But I have written over two pages with this in my writing journal, and it still looks like this. Um, I'm curious to know how it will look like on the different on the other papers. I will show those to you as well. Um, but so far, quite disappointing, for sure. This is the Kaweco, as I said, Kaweco AL Sport Golden Espresso. This is an MNIB, and this is, of all the MNIBs that I have on my Kawekos, this is the smoothest of those. This is Diamine Pink Ice. This is definitely not a color that I would gravitate towards. I do like how it looks though, um, especially when I flip through my writing journal. Let me just show you what I mean by that. I, I write every entry is a different color. And so I really like how that looks. And so in, this is the pink eyes, in the writing journal, it does look really nice with playing with these other colors. Maybe that's why I am inking up my pens with or choosing a, an ink palette because I really love how it looks in the overall picture when I flip through the, the journal. Maybe that's something that's important to me. If, if you don't do this, then maybe that's not, not important to you. I, I just enjoy doing that, so that's what I do. This is the Opus 88. 88 pocket pen. I think that's what it's called. It's a broad nib and the ink is Diamine Festive Joy. And that's also an ink vent ink, ink vent. Oh, now I know why this looks different. Um, I do enjoy the broader nib. It's quite wet. I don't really know why I need to look at the nib under a loop. I have, the first time I wrote with it, it worked perfectly fine. But I, this is the second time that I noticed that every time I, I start, I do a downstroke. It skips on me and so I need to check what the reason for this is. I do have a problem with getting a nice, um, um, how do you say that in English? Schriftbild is what we call it in German. Like when you look at the writing on the page, does it look even? Is it nice and you know, the, the overall picture of the handwriting, my handwriting doesn't look that nice with this pen. And um, yeah, I guess I'll get used to it at some point. But love how, how smooth it is, how wet it writes, totally amazing. This, again, I said I got this at um, second hand. I purchased it from a someone in Germany and then they sent it to my parents and they brought it to me in June. That's why I inked it up right away when they gave it to me just so that I could see how it writes. This is an MNIB. I post my pens so that the clip points down because I feel it um, weighs the pen or the weight of the pen is distributed more nicer, more nicely. Oh, wow. Adjectives and so this is a very fine medium nib in my opinion compared to for instance this one. Let me show you what I mean. Twisby Mini in rose gold and that's the second edition. That's a medium nib and the ink is Robert Oster. Oster old book. This 
just now. Um, the previous owner said that this nib was scratchy and they didn't like how it wrote. I agree. I, again, when I took out the micro mesh for the Kaweco, I did the same thing with this one and it helped tremendously. I really like this ink. It looks a lot darker. Maybe it has settled a bit in this pen or the, the reason why it looks so different is because this is Tomoyo River paper and this is not. Um, yes, I really enjoy this. I love writing with it, so perfect. Then let's move on to this one. Again, it's, it's one of those, I inked my pens up and for some reason, oh, now it's better. Um, I cleaned it in the morning and then I inked it up in the afternoon and woo, was this ink faint? I, the reason was probably because there was still um, water in the pen. I should have let it dry more, but I didn't because you know how I am, very impatient. Uh, let me write 14K so that it indicates the gold nib. This is Sailor Ink Studio 1, 2, 3. I really like how the shading, this is pro a chromo shading ink. You can see the, the purple, the blue, and then there's kind of like a teal turquoise to be seen here. Um, that comes out on the Tomori River paper. Interestingly enough, this doesn't write well on the MD paper. I don't know if it's the ink. Well, it is because the Robert Oster ink that I had inked in here before, I did not have a problem when I wrote with it the other day. Um, it was a struggle. Everything, all of the downstrokes did not skipped. Ugh. Um, I have to admit that even though I was excited for the lined um, journal and I've, I enjoyed writing in the format, I don't like the paper as much as I had hoped. I currently prefer even the Stology paper over the MD paper in the regular 003 or whatever lined is, but that's the same paper. I prefer the Stalogy paper with my fountain pens over the MD paper, which a year or two ago, I would have never guessed I would say that at all. But on this paper, it writes really well and smooth. So I guess it's just a matter of time until this is done. So I'm, I'm, I'm past the halfway mark and I definitely want to go back to a Tomoe River paper insert. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to this and I have been journaling almost every day. First to empty out my pens right over here. And then now I'm writing every day so that this <laughs> journal finishes faster. Then let's move on to the Kaweco. Definitely visible with all of the pens when I don't write with them very often. Kaweco collection collection iridescent pearl iridescent pearl is that the ink uh, there will be water evaporating and the ink appears a lot darker than it appears on the sample as you can see Vinta. Tala. um so yeah, that's another thing that helps encourage me to write and use those pens more than I, I have. And I currently do really need or enjoy sitting down every day and writing a bit about my thoughts. I am in a creative uh, YouTube everything slump. And so just writing down that I... Uh, I, well, I don't feel like a complete failure, but like everything is a struggle. Um, even if I repeat myself every day by writing the same thing, it just brings me joy because at least I feel 
something. I do something with my hands, even if it's just writing. Inkvent. This is by far one of my favorite colors and I've been really inspired by other people that I've been watching on YouTube uh, sharing their favorite inks and I plan on doing one of those, maybe 12. Let's see how many I find um, right away. Um, making a, at the end of the year, picking my favorite ink, especially uh, of the ones that I had in pens, picking my favorite ink and making a video and then have this be a thing every year uh, where I talk about what has changed, how I like things. I think that might be a really cool video, at least for me, I will enjoy that. I will enjoy thinking about it and making it. And so 45, medium nib. This is the Franklin Christoph model 45 in the medium, in with the medium nib, as I said before. I really love the color. I think that is vintage green. I love the aesthetics of this pen. This is so minimal, so stylish. Every detail on this pen has a purpose. Um, and I just, that just appeals to my minimal architect heart. And so I, I really wanted to get this. And as you see, saw, I got one early on in my fountain pen journey. Right now I'm, I'm eyeing several pens. I think I asked before, would you like a video where I write about the pens that I would love to try writing with? I think I, I would enjoy making that. Robert Oster and why I think I want this. I haven't made any um, of my ink journal entries in the past two months or so. And I really, really want to do one with the tea time and compare it with the uh, Rohrer and Klingner Altgold Grün. I have that one in my ink journal already. And I would love to see how different the inks are. I can see a difference. It's April 4th. So we can just go right here. I see a difference in I don't know how, I think this is more yellow. Something is different on this, just a teeny tiny sliver different. I would love to see how the um, chromatography turns out. Wow, I'm showing you nothing. Um, just, just to see how these two inks compare. I'm going away again uh, for a week, but when I'm back, I hope to be back and filming more and maybe that's what is holding me back right now the knowing that I'm going again and that I don't even have to settle into my routines again and try really hard because it's gonna be jumbled anyway again maybe that's that's the reason this is the Twisby swipe in the Prussian blue with an M nib and the ink is Robert Oster, stargazing. And as I said, nope. Or I, I mentioned it earlier, this pen gave me so much trouble. I, was, I, I wasn't sure, should I use it? How will it, um, how will it write? Will it even start? I don't see a lot of shimmer in the cartridge here and there is some shimmer residue right here. Maybe all the shimmer is already out and that's why it doesn't give me any trouble. Let me hold up the... When I look at it from the side, I don't see any shimmer in, in the ink as well. So I, I assume that that is exactly what is happening. I wanted to share one more thing with you, which is this Nolte Efficiency. It's a yearly planner in a pocket size. I used it as a making diary um, in the beginning of the year. And then in, uh, when happened, did that, that happen? At the end of uh, April, I started using it as an ink 
jotter. That's what I'm calling it. Um, every time I, I journal, I write down what pen I use and if I have something to say about it, then I will write it on this left side, like imagining this goes on like that. And it really worked totally amazing. I love seeing what I'm writing here. As you can see, I clearly had problems with this uh, fountain pen right here. And then I, you can also see when I don't journal a lot, what I like is that I see, okay, I used this pen on the 26th of April. And then the next time I used it was on the 5th of May or like I used the VAC 700R Iris on May 1st and then on May 7th. Um, and then sometimes I don't use a pen for a long time and that you can see in here as well, um, which then shows you, okay, maybe the reason why this is too dark the next time I write with this is because it sat there for three weeks. Um, 21st of May, either ink and pen don't match or ink is super needy, very maintenance heavy. My handwriting is off when I use this pen. Is it the clip? Stuff like that I write on here when I switch the um, writing journal. I wrote it here when I used a new ink palette and that's the notes that I took uh, the last month and a half same problem again with the Twisby and the Shimmer ink. I used the... I didn't have any problem with the Shimmer ink in the Pilot Custom 74, so I, I don't know. So there is all the things that I wrote down here this week. I didn't journal at all or just once. I had a problem with the Twisby Mini but I was just, I just turned the piston twice um, and then it, it, it worked again. So I really, I really enjoy writing things down like that. And here you can see on the 10th of July, I started journaling almost, almost every day. Well, today is the 20th and I haven't journaled yet, but who knows what is going to happen. In the back, I thought about when I, that, the day when I switched or thought about inks, ink colors that I want to use. I wrote down which ink, which pens are empty, which pens I might unink and which I'm going to, to keep. Um, yeah, so I really enjoy this and I'm thinking hard about getting another one next year. Maybe, I'm not sure if I'm going to use a Hobonichi at all. So that would be a, a reason to get a Hobonichi Weeks. I don't know. Um, let me know how you uh, write down what, you, what pen you use on what day. Is that even something that you track? I seem to be totally have fallen into this whole ink and fountain pen rabbit hole and that just brings me so much joy. Let us compare, wow. Um, how these inks look on the different papers. I put on clips while I was um, filming and talking for the Tomoe River paper. You must have seen me writing in the other journals in different clips and from different writing angles. So Tomoe River paper is my favorite. All of these inks look exactly how I imagine them to look. I love how the Sailor Ink Studio comes out. Um, the Lamy Mango is not my favorite. I like the shading on the Tea Time. There is no shimmer left on the Stargazing. And the uh, Vinta Tala seems to be really like evaporating a lot of um, wa water and darkened a lot. Here, the Lamy Mango comes out a little bit better. All of the inks are more vibrant, bolder. The, the strokes of the nibs look bolder as well. Okay, I made a mistake right here. Um, there is shimmer in all these shimmer inks, except for the Stargazing. 
So I guess my theory was right. There's not a lot to be seen here, but this one is a super, super shimmer. Um, I like the Sailor Ink Studio. You can see in this teeny tiny swatch, you can see the the chromo shading, but with the writing, it, it works. It's readable, but it's not as it's different and as intriguing as with on the Tomoe River paper. Now, when I write on the MD paper, it always feels like my pens dry out. The only time I did not experience that was with the Kaweco Golden Espresso, with the Opus 88, and with the Franklin Christoph. Oh, this one as well. But here you can clearly see that it looks like it's going to skip soon. Um, the Lamy Mango felt really bad. It always feels like I'm dragging my pens over the paper. The chromo shading properties come out, but not as well and vibrant as on the other two papers. Again, there's no shimmer on the stargazing, so it is what it is. The Sub-Zero is just cool. And this one has some sheen and I, you can see it on all the samples. But again, I think that has to do with the fact that this ink has been in this pen for a while. Okay, let me know what you have inked up. How many pens do you have currently? Do you have an ink jotter? What's your favorite paper to write on besides Tomoe River paper? I would love to know in the comments down below. I'd love to chat with you. Hope to see you soon. Until then, bye.